over here. So where is the first moment of area we're going to take? Okay, so we know we know that the analysis. Okay, so if we're going to apply the formula, so the formula that we'll be applying is shear stress is equal to V over I, which are constant. Yes or no? Right. Q Z over T. What is this Q Z over T? So we know regardless of the point of interest, right? This is this book, this point over here are all constant. Now we want to find point alpha. So the first moment of area that we have to take or we have to consider is this is your defined area. Okay. This is your defined area. The analysis direction starts from the furthest away from the centroid. Okay, so this is your analysis direction. So this will become your, this distance over here will become your Y and this distance. Okay, so the, the distance from here, all right? Now this is your Y bar, okay? So this example uh, is easy. Right, it's straightforward. Okay. Now the next question comes: What if we want to find the point over here? Now is what? Beta. The difference from alpha and beta is now beta is below the global centroid. Okay. So, what area are we going to take? Okay. What area are we going to take? So a lot of times students get confused, okay? Now all these have a vertical VY. VY is coming from the top. Okay, this one also VY is coming from the top. Okay, this is also VY from the top. So if we were if we were to just be fixated with VY. Okay, we just focus on VY, right? Then by doing that, that's where the problem comes. You were you were taught, right? You were you were taught or you were think that this is the first moment of area. Right? If you focus on VY. Unfortunately, this is wrong. Why this is wrong because of uh, because of one reason, okay? Be why, why this is wrong because of one reason is we have rule number four, right? Is broken or, or is, is not valid here or, or Rule four is not obeyed, right? What do I mean by that? If you look at rule number four, it states that the first moment of area cannot cross over the global centroid, right? You see that, and that's wrong, okay? Then you say, okay, then what is the correct answer, okay? So there's another possibility. Okay, there's another possibility. So I'm going to do the next possibility. Okay, so this is our X and Y. I will try to save some space. Move this about. Sincerely apologizing for doing this to all of you. But I need space. Okay. So if we were to now do the same okay we want to find our 
our shear stress at point beta. All right, so now I, was, I still want to find shear stress at point beta. Okay, so you might, you, we might think, hey, if that's the case, why not I consider this area then? Why not I consider this area? Right? You did not break rule number four. Rule number four is still valid, but this is also wrong. Okay. Because now, rule number, uh, number three is not obeyed. Right? So rule number three states, the analysis starts from the perpendicular distance furthest away from the global centroid. So the perpendicular, uh, the distance furthest away from the, the, the centroid, it can be here. Your analysis direction can go this way, which is furthest away from the global centroid, or it can go this way. It cannot cross over the centroid. Okay, so this is again wrong. Okay, then the third option that we have. Okay, so this is the last option, and this is the only one that's going to be correct. Okay, so the last option now. Okay. So again, so Vy is also coming from the top. Okay, so this one is also the same. V Y is coming from the top. Now, in order to find beta, the area to consider, okay, is this area. Hey, okay. yeah, is this area, and this is correct. Why? Okay, why this is correct? Okay. Because we did uh, we we did comply that the datum is from the global centroid, right? The analysis is from the furthest distance away from the centroid, right? The first murmur of area did not cross over the global centroid, right? You can see that, right? Okay, from the global centroid. So and V and I are constant. Okay, V and I are constant. So, to find beta, that is the area to consider. Okay, so that's why these rules are so important. Now, there's another option. There's another option. Okay, you might say, Eugene, uh, there can be another option. Yeah, there can be another option. If, if you are to, uh, no, sorry, I, I beg your pardon, there's no more other option. That is the only way that you can find uh, beta. Okay. So that is why these rules are so critical. If 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 you don't apply these rules, or or when I started this course, I've not set these rules before, I will find beta using this. Why? Because I'm so fixated of what? Vy. Okay, because Vy is coming from the top, I have to take from the top, then it will distribute throughout that area and cross the global centroid and reach B. No, that's wrong. Okay, so the right answer is the last one over here. So this is correct. Okay, so just just a uh, a, a, a a short example uh, for you. Okay, I know alpha is easy because it's from the top, right? Right, v is from the yeah, that's straightforward. Okay, so this is this is how you are going to apply the rules. Okay, without all these rules, it can get very very confusing. Okay, now let's go back and derive. Okay, so this is part of an example and application. Let's go back and derive our equation over here. Okay, anyone have any questions so far? It's just the four of you and me. Okay, it's okay. Any questions so far? If you want me to repeat something, I, I will repeat. Okay. I got nothing yet. Okay. So coming back to here, 
let's recall back what we are trying to do is we are trying to derive this expression over here. Okay, I, I, I don't want us to lose sight of this. Okay, we are trying to derive this. Yeah, we are trying to derive this expression. So the form, the root formula that we are using is here. Uh, X Y is equal to V Y over I Z Z Q Z divided by T. Okay. So we will want to find our I Z Z now. Right. So I Z Z this will be our width. And this over here is our depth. All right, so the width is B, the depth is 2C power of 3 divided by 12. So this will become 8BC cubed over 12. And this happened to be uh, 2 over 3. B the Q. Okay. So we know our QZ, we know our IZZT in this case will be equal to our B. Okay. And I want you to take note is that the thickness, note that the thickness T, right? Is the geometry perpendicular to Q? So Q over here, it means the shear flow. Okay. So this is our Q. So now we have everything, we can start substituting our shear x, y. So shear x, y is equal to v, y divided by i, z, z. So 2 over 3, uh, b, c, q. Then multiply by uh, q, y. So we have our q, y as I could not remember now. Sorry, Q Z zero point five B okay, zero point five B oh oh yeah zero point five B C squared minus by Y squared and the thickness that we have is B. Okay. So we can we can start uh, cancelling, so we can get rid of this. We can get rid of this. I'm going to tidy up the equation uh, uh, a bit over here. So this will be equal to 3 over 4. Right? And then you have your Vy over uh, Bc cubed. And then you will have your uh, C squared minus by y squared okay and i want you all to take note okay, note that the area right the area of the entire structure is equal to uh 2bc right because the height is the width is b the total height is 2 so B multiplied by 2C, so this is equal to 2BC. So I will separate the, the 3 over 2 over here, and then I will multiply by another 2, it's still the same. So we have VY, and I will have BC over here, and I will separate with the C squared, right? I'm just rearranging it slightly, something like what you do in Laplace transform. So we know that this term over here, 2BC is equal to our A. 
So this will be equal to 3 over 2. Vy over C squared, right? C squared minus Y squared. 